This is the power of it. Don't you settle for less. If you just give your best, then you will have success. This is the power of it. Don't you settle for less. If you just give your best, yeah. then you the purpose of this capstone project was to investigate the effects growth mindset lessons have upon the improvement of math accuracy in elementary math classrooms. This review aims to identify the areas that are most crucial to implementing a growth mindset approach to teaching and learning within an elementary math classroom. Growth mindset is grounded in the belief that you can grow through your own efforts. Mindsets of children regarding their ability and intelligence can impact and affect the trajectory of their learning. The belief that mathematics is a fixed trait and that some people are just not math people is common and may be a reason for students' underperformance in mathematics. Mathematics educator Joel Bowler states, fixed mindsets that many people hold about mathematics often combine with other negative beliefs about mathematics to a devastating effect. The National Council of Mathematics acknowledges mindset as a crucial element in student success in mathematics and addresses the significance and beliefs about mathematics. Understanding the effects growth mindset lessons have upon the accuracy and work completion in elementary math classrooms is important because beliefs are shown to impact student dispositions that lead to stronger effort and better academic outcomes. Mindsets are considered to be a range of self-beliefs, with a fixed mindset on one end of the scale and a growth mindset on the other. Individuals hold beliefs towards particular goals, attitudes, and behaviors. The idea that there are two mindsets that people can possess about their abilities, intelligence, and talents was introduced by psychologist and author Carol Dweck. According to Jaeger and Dweck, individuals holding a growth mindset believe in an incremental theory of intelligence. Ability is something that is malleable and can be developed. Individuals holding a fixed mindset believe in an entity theory of intelligence. People are either intelligent or they are not. This approach to learning can result in individuals giving up when learning becomes too challenging. A growth mindset encourages someone to embrace opportunities that provide challenge where failure is a real possibility, sustain effort, and try new strategies. Feedback has been shown to influence the learning and behavior outcomes of students. Feedback can be defined as information provided by the teacher on the performance of the learner in which both the process and result are important in order to promote the learning and maintain or increase motivation. Growth mindset feedback guides and motivates students and keeps them focused on the process of learning. Process-oriented feedback comments on how results have been achieved and can be improved while results-oriented feedback comments on what results have been achieved. For growth-oriented teachers, it is not the outcome, but the process that is most important. Through teacher-student interactions, the classroom environment can affect students' mindsets and academic achievement. Interventions to develop growth mindset thinking are most successful when they are delivered by a teacher who holds an incremental or growth mindset themselves. The key to ensuring sustainability is for those implementing the intervention to be convinced of its effectiveness. When students believe their abilities can change, they have a greater perceived self-control over the outcome of future academic events and focus more on learning the material. Students who have a growth mindset related to ability persist longer when encountering challenges and achieve at higher levels academically. Rather than limiting student success to correctness, a range of students' ideas, representations, and strategies should be valued and recognized. Sun suggests establishing the norm that everyone can learn math to the highest level in math classes about learning and not performing. The principal element of mindset intervention is to convey the idea that ability is a malleable trait that continues to improve incrementally with effort and practice. Mathematics teachers can influence students' mindsets by explicitly communicating information about the malleability of mathematics ability to their students. A growth mindset says, I can't do it yet. This communicates to students that they will eventually be able to learn the material. The word yet emphasizes the importance of seeing learning as a process and leaves space and gives hope for improvement and motivation to continue.
this is the power of yet. You may not get the problem, don't spend hours in stress. No, it's all about the process. Steady, make progress, remain optimistic. I don't get it, well, not yet. Life is a journey, not a destination. Every teacher, every leader need this in education. Tempted to say, can't have the courage to add yet. A growth mindset, the staff in the class met. You see, there's a difference between not knowing and not knowing yet. That three letter word yet is very powerful if you think about it. I can't do this yet. Perseverance is paramount. Encouraging critical thinking and introducing productive struggle in math helps support students in realizing that growth often requires making mistakes, struggling, or experiencing failure. If failures become interesting, informative, and motivating, students learn that failure can actually enhance performance and productivity. Mistakes are not perceived as failures, but are reframed as problems that require different strategies, and through this, knowledge is enriched. If learners understand how the brain works, they can begin to gain a sense of control over their own thinking. The concept of neuroplasticity emphasizes the malleable nature of the brain. Students can be taught that how, when learning, the brain grows stronger and smarter by forming new connections between neurons. Like a muscle, our brains get stronger. Neuroscience shows that mathematics is a subject, like all others, that is learned through hard work and practice. This investigation was conducted in an elementary school in a large public school district. Of the 801 students enrolled at the school, the participants in this investigation were two fifth grade classes. The total minority enrollment at the school is 78% and 56% of the students are economically disadvantaged. The student group consisted of 21 females and 23 males. 25% of the students received 504 accommodations and 7% of students received special education services. Student names were not used for data collection. Each student was assigned to a corresponding number 1 through 44. This study uses a quantitative research design. This investigation occurred over a three-week unit focused on the addition and subtraction of fraction fractions with unlike denominators. Prior to any intervention, a growth mindset survey was given to students during math class. The growth mindset survey included six questions pertaining to students' thoughts and feelings about their own mindset. Three different math assessments with a total of 10 points was given to students at the end of each five-day period. All content within the assessments came from fifth grade skills. The intervention was conducted during community circle, a designated time for social and emotional learning lessons. Using a paired two-tailed t-test, the mean growth mindset score was compared between the students' pre- and post-surveys to determine if there were any significant differences. A normal distribution was created and charted using the mean and standard deviation for each question obtained from the survey. By collecting qu quantitative data, I was looking for connections that would justify further use of the gro growth mindset lessons. The mathematics scores were from assessment 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 were charted to show student progress within the unit. I wanted to observe if the intervention increased students' belief that they were able to grow their own accuracy on math assignments. This table shows the mean for each question and grouping for fixed mindset set perspective questions and growth mindset perspective questions. The variance for the fixed perspective questions is greater than that for the growth perspective questions. The paired samples two-tailed t-test showed there's no significant difference between the pre and post survey results for fixed mindset p is equal to 47 hundredths or growth mindset p is equal to 32 hundredths. Although the results were not statistically significant, there is evidence that students move toward more of a growth mindset. In examining the pre-intervention survey, the students can generally overall be characterized as being growth-minded. The results of the intervention can be seen by the response changes from the survey on the combined percentages. The table shows the results from the pre- and post-survey surveys and the changes or difference between the surveys on the combined fixed perspective and growth perspective questioning. Questions. Focusing on the change chart, the fixed blue bars show an increase in the strongly disagree and disagree. Likewise, there was an increase to the strongly agree responses. Both are indicators that the intervention was effective.
The math assessment was conducted over three weeks to determine the intervention's effectiveness. The chart shows the comparative changes across the three assessments. Student scores were compared from assessment one to assessment two, assessment two to assessment three, and assessment one to assessment three. Overall, the results show that by the third assessment, there was an overall improvement of 19 answers in correct responses, while only seven answers in incorrect responses in relation to the first two assessments. Most students showed improvement in their math scores during the three-week period. The results indicated that there were small increases of fifth grade students' growth mindset during the intervention period. A difference between the increase in mindset and the increase in math scores was investigated as part of the, as part of the intervention. Each data set showed improvement independently on students' growth mindset and math scores. Providing the opportunity for students to build their own understanding of their mindset and develop skills is beneficial in mathematics, as suggested by this study. With the data, I concluded that the intervention did increase the students' belief that they were able to grow their own mindset with the use of strategies. As I reflect over the growth mindset intervention, I realize how important the role of the teachers is in generating, supporting, and reinforcing growth mindset attitudes and beliefs. I will continue to practice growth mindset language and feedback within the classroom while providing opportunities for every student to be challenged in a safe environment. that I wrote for you. You can accomplish anything that you hope to do. Believe in yourself. Never say never. Practice makes perfect. Think about the positives and not the negatives. You can do great things and always remember there is power in yet. This is the power of yet. Don't you settle for less. If you just give your best, then you will have success. This is the power of yet. Don't you settle for less. If you just give your best, then you will have success. This is the power of yet. Don't you settle for less. If you just give your best, then you will have success. This is the power.